Welcome back to Getting Past the Premium, everybody, with Ryan Brott, myself. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm glad to be back, Elliot. Yeah, we, we were without you for a couple episodes, but good to have you back on the show. And then with us today, we have Peter Teresi with Certificial. How you doing, Peter? Doing well, man. Thank you. Good. Well, I'm excited for this conversation. You guys are doing some really cool stuff in the, I'll call it insure tech space, but uh, you know what you guys are doing is pretty awesome. So I want to make sure we uh, give your background and how you got to where you're at today and who you are. So I'll kind of let you take that piece away and uh, walk the audience through what you guys are doing and how you got to where you're at. All right, cool. No, I appreciate it. First, you know, thanks for having me, guys. Really do appreciate the opportunity to speak, uh, join the podcast, and and you know, uh, have access to the audience. So excited! Absolutely. To be here. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll keep the background somewhat short. You know, I mean, but I've, I've been in insurance most of my career now, and I really am a technologist at heart. Uh, although I've spent most of my career in insurance, you know, I've never actually been a broker myself and sold insurance, but I've worked very closely with agencies and brokers and carriers. So. Yeah. I know enough to be dangerous, um, but you know, being a, with a technology background, um, you know, I think one of the interesting things uh, about my career journey is that I've always kind of worked in semi-startup small environments. So, you know, when I started Certificial, it was very new, but you know, not completely foreign at the same time. Yeah. Uh, you know, even like you know, again, if you go back for you know, the beginning of my career, I started working with Microsoft, and even there, as big as Microsoft was, you know, I was part of MSNBC when it was a joint venture. And one of the first employees, you know, so it was a very hmm. wow. startup feel as like a trailer in Fort Lee, New Jersey to a, you know, to a big studio in, in Secaucus, <laughs> New Jersey eventually. Um, hmm. Again, very different than, you know, your typical startup. You're being backed by Microsoft and NBC, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, versus your, your bank account, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, but still. A lot of the things that are necessary in order to to grow teams and to grow, you know, to create technology and do things, you know, it's kind of been there from the beginning for me. Uh, and again, you'll you'll find that 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 kind of continuation throughout all, all of my uh, pr prior roles. I worked for a company on Wall Street that got, you know, was again seventy five people got bought out by a big company, but I was there during the early days. And then, you know, majority of my career was really spent with Accord. So although not a startup, certainly yep. still a small org. Uh, wearing many hats, you know, again, mm -hmm. a lot of things you need to do, right, as a founder and, and, and in a startup, uh, and was responsible for standards globally. So it was really my time with Accord that allowed me to get very close to working with, you know, actual insurance agents and brokers and carriers and really start to see the, the inner workings of the insurance industry, which looking at that through the, you know, the mindset and the view of a, of a technologist is always yeah, it's just endless opportunities, you know, it's a matter <laughs> of really... Ideas learning our industry and learning how it actually operates because yeah. you know ideas come you know there's many right like you know every yeah. you know it doesn't, it's not hard to come up with ideas when you look at insurance and you see the way that certain things work mm -hmm. um the execution and how you actually plan to implement is probably where the the, the, the real skill comes in right that's where the real yeah. like you have to understand the inner workings of our industry um mm -hmm. because it is complex right wrong or indifferent um and getting things done in insurance is not easy, right? It's a totally. task. In a timing, hat. right? Yeah. Product market timing is, is another probably thing. one of the biggest issues. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Um, so yeah, so you know, with Accord, um, I um, I started developing some tech there, and and um, and uh, eventually the the Accord Solutions Group was created, right? And I kind of ran that as a CEO for a number of years and built some tech there, and glad to see that continue to you know remain in production. Yeah and some good things going on there. And, you know, from there, it was just a matter of like, okay, I have worked with enough agents, brokers, and carriers at this point, and I've heard about this certificate of insurance, you know, because again, it's one of the earlier standards that come from Accord. Yep. And so, you know, constantly, you know, hearing about the pains and the struggles inside our industry with this. And it's just one of those things that I just had some really strong ideas and, and, and thoughts on, on how to solve and solution. And I think when I looked at the landscape of what was happening, um, and, and the attempts that were, that were, I would say, more like band-aids to this problem. Everyone, it seemed like there was a little bit of a, a disconnect in truly trying to tackle this from a foundational perspective. And let's see if we can just patch it up all over the place. But it really wasn't making the process any better. Yeah. Um, and that's where, you know, Certificial kind of came to fruition. You know, that, that was the, the vision from the beginning was to take a to take a different approach at this and be innovative in this space and, and, and transformative. But again, most importantly, knowing our industry, knowing how things are going to move. This is not a light switch that's going to get flipped 
we're not changing overnight. This is embedded, never mind in insurance, it's embedded in every vertical and every business yep. that intersects with insurance, right? <laughs> the complexity of change management control here is you know, one of, one of the highest levels I've at least encountered and worked with. Um, and so, you know, you know, our ability to do that had to be very thought out from the beginning, you know, and that's, you know, again, that's kind of the background, right? Um, but when you did know, you start Certificial? We are technically going on like, you know, year four into five now. Yeah. That's uh, what I thought. Yeah. So, you know, we had some, some early prototypes and in, in late, late 19, um, really went into production in early 2021 uh with like you know real like big clients yeah. real production not you know uh yeah. and then yeah it's been growth since then which is you know we're proud of that's awesome that's awesome well one of the things that maybe i'll have you dive into what certificial actually does quickly because i think that's important but want to highlight you know this this uh where we've gotten with insuretech right when insuretech first rolled out it was like the death of the independent agent right and everybody wanted to displace this <laughs> old industry that is, you know, uh, the independent agency channel, right? Uh, go direct to the consumer. Um, I think that's certainly we've all we've all seen that shift. There's there's obviously direct to consumer insure techs out there, yeah. um, but what I've been seeing is much more uh, around tools being built to support the independent agency channel uh, and to continue to allow us to uh, build those into our model to provide more value back to the clients. Um, and so that's where I'd be curious, you know, to dive into what Certificial does, but then what specifically were you trying to accomplish when you started Certificial? You mentioned some of the issues with certs and what you're trying to solve, which we've all experienced, but, you know, maybe get a little more tactical there around how you're working to solve those for the independent agency channel. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And it's, you know, the, the, the view I have of this and, and the way we approach this is, is really unique um, because, on one on one hand it's like really what we're trying to truly solve in the end is is the certificate holders problem which is yeah. you know which is really the need right if it wasn't for certificate holders or people needing to verify coverage this process wouldn't exist yep. wouldn't, wouldn't have a problem right? I, no one would ever create another coi again right if, unless unless a cert holder asks for it right they're, yep. they're happy to get rid of this process but you know but that's not the case right and people do have a need for this and so if you're not really solving that end point and there's not a true success that you can say this is working for this end customer then then really what have you solved right you've just again you're just you know you're maybe creating efficiencies or maybe creating you know solving some journeys but again if it's all for the purpose of something that doesn't have true value then i say what's the point yeah. uh, and down honestly it's one of the ways i look at clis i'd say if, if we're going to keep doing what we're doing today the way this is being done i question why we continue to do it uh, because the amount of E and O exposure that we introduce into the insurance industry versus the amount of actual compliance a cert holder gets, I don't think the risk and reward's worth it. I don't think the time and effort's worth it. Uh, and that's why when I look at this, it, it to me it's it's a foundational change. It's 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 flawed at a at a level that requires a bit of a whiteboard session. Um, but again, you know, knowing that we have to be able to evolve within our industry and not have a change that occurs overnight. So. You know, with that said, you know, important to Certificial, of course, is the end customer and making sure that they're able to actually accomplish what it is that they set to do when they ask for a certificate of insurance. And you'll find as we get a little bit into our business model, we're actually funded by the risk management community. Um, and what that really allows us to do is, you know, when I first heard about COIs, it wasn't about the certificate holders pain points. I learned about those later. What I learned about, you know, certificates of insurance from agents and brokers was, the operational challenges they have, the fact that they're getting, you know, and I hear an agent say, I'm, I'm thinking of passing on a customer and not selling them insurance because they have too many COI requests and they have too many cert holders because they're doing so much business that there's nothing left in the premiums, there's nothing left in, and you know, and, and that makes sense for me to even write this customer, you know, like that's, you know, says something about the process, you know, like if we're actually turning away business because of COIs and because yeah. of cert requests is interesting to me. Um, and furthermore, you know, think about the customer service interaction that happens there. I, I think we don't spend enough time when we think about COIs to realize the position an independent agent is in and maintaining a good customer relationship with their client because that COI yeah. stands between them getting paid and 
doing uh, work and, 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 and sometimes affects the relationship of their customer. I mean, it's a very tough spot for an independent agent to, to, to be in, you know, and, and if they're not able to service that right, we've got all these operational challenges inside the insurance industry that, you know, that we want to solve for that as well. And so when you look at Certificial, we are equally taking all three stakeholders equally in mind, whether it be the insurance industry, which I'll put as a stakeholder, the actual policy holder, is two as is equally you know thought throughout in our workflows and our applications and service and the certificate holder and that's one of the things that makes us unique is that we're an end to end looking at this from all three perspectives not how do i just solve the your your portion of the process and your portion of the process because all those breakpoints is what makes the process not work right um and so you know so we are you know at the same point very much focused on solving the insurance agents problem and the reason why solving the insurance industries uh, issues in this space is so important is that it's our belief that if if you solve within the insurance industry and you innovate here the downward benefits and effects automatically occur for the others you almost have to spend less time solutioning for them because you solved it at the right point the right you know and, you know, and, you know we always say you can only catch what you're thrown so if yeah. you think you're going to be innovative from the risk management side of the house, you know, I say good luck. This has got to come from within. This is an insurance, you know, process that comes from within the insurance industry. So the innovation has to come from within. And so mm -hmm. that's why we start our journey there, quite honestly, uh, when it comes to innovation and transformation. And again, push out from there. And everybody wins when you solve and you fix problems at the right level. Such yeah. an important point. Totally. It's a great perspective. And I love how you're, hitting multiple points in I'll say the customer journey as it relates to verifying insurance. Yeah. Um, but dive into a little bit, cause I think it's super unique on um, how you guys are compensated for the product uh, and what that means for independent agents and the independent agents clients. Right. Cause yeah. I think that's, you walk through that and hit all three of those. Sure. Um, but now talk about who's actually paying for the product because this is very unique. Yeah. And so, again, you know, kind of looking at our industry and saying, all right, well, if I'm if I need to solve a problem for the cert holder, ultimately, um, then, you know, how, how you know what really if, if the innovation has to come from within the insurance industry, then the way we looked at it is, well, let's empower the insurance industry. Let's give them the tools they need to actually service what the, you know, we call requesters on our system, we call, you know, cert holders requesters, uh, just because cert holders to form driven of a name, and we are a data driven company, and forms are a rendering of that data and that information at any point in time. So you're really a requester, in, in our eyes, it's artificial. So if I use that term request them, I am referring to the traditional cert holder. But, you know, ultimately, you know, in order to do that, we you know, again, we got to empower the insurance industry. So we came up with a model that, you know, we're able to to provide you know an excellent enterprise compliance management system to the requester communities um, and they're able to use us and again we got legacy support in every aspect of our system all right that's how we know how we can transform and, and move into this process you know for agents we have print support and for requesters we can process cois all that traditional stuff that goes on today um, but it's the you know it's 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 the more um innovative use of the system that really creates the the tremendous benefits for them so as these requesters come into the the system we're giving them a very powerful compliance management tool where we're funded in that way that allows us to build our technology and what we built in the insurance industry is now an extension to both policy administration systems and agency management systems that um creates an experience where you know we're not trying to create login fatigue here we're trying to make it Feel like you never really left your management system as much as possible so that you have a way of working on a client and when you go to issue cois or respond to requests because we're a bi-directional uh, uh, platform that the insurance agencies or whoever the csrs whoever's acting on behalf of that process flow can just come into this process and very quickly uh, respond and, and and get these cois out the door so in the insurance industry we do not charge for anything that relates to issuing COIs. So it doesn't matter who's doing it. it. Doesn't matter if it's the agent, the CSR teams, or even the insured, if they're enabled with self-service capabilities. Because I mentioned, I said we have a insured stakeholder profile mm -hmm. in our system. So all of that is free because the way we look at it is the more the network gets fed, the more data that's on the network, the more we're able to solve not only the challenges that go on inside the insurance industry, but 
really feed into the compliance and the risk management community data and information that makes this process valuable and, and worthy. So we're funded on that end to really empower the insurance industry. And that's a model we're, we're proud of. And it's a little complex and confusing, but when you really think about it, it makes sense. You know, it's like, um, could we sell things in insurance? Absolutely. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah, and I really don't feel like going through a, another yeah. sales cycle on that, on that side. I just want to mm -hmm. say, here's the technology. We've made it available for you. Get the benefits and, uh, you know, and hopefully it brings, it brings, you know, all agents and brokers, you know, value. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. absolutely. What I love about that is what you mentioned at the start, you know, you really wouldn't have this process if somebody didn't need to verify insurance coverage. Right. So if the reason that we have to produce a certificate is because somebody wants to verify insurance coverage, that person, that end user should probably be the one that is paying for access to that insurance information. Right. Nobody's ever thought about that <laughs> that yeah. way, uh, you know, but it makes a ton of sense. It's, it's a service essentially that we provide our policyholders uh, to issue these, right? Uh, which everybody does. And, you know, it's part of being in the insurance Cost industry. Of commercial business. Yep. hundred percent. And, uh, but, but it's unique in that now we can use a tool that makes that process way easier on us and, and not even from an efficiency perspective, which it does. But I think the bigger thing is what you hit on there, the client experience, uh, making that process simple for your client, for then their who you know who they're doing work for or who they're sending the cert to, uh, making sure that that process is simple and easy. They can verify the coverage uh, very simply, that they can get started on work, they can get paid, whatever it is, um, and, and that whole system now works more cohesively, right? Yeah. And Absolutely. that's where I think it's so unique in the in the magic and what and how you structured that is. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And you know, and, and you know, one thing I want to clarify because it, it comes up in most conversations is if you if you're an agency and you're issuing your certificates through Certificial, if those cert holders are not utilizing Certificial for compliant management services, they're just looking for a COI. There is no charge to that certificate holder either. That is all free end to end because we don't charge for the delivery of a COI. Yeah. But we're actually, our fees come in is when a cert holder optionally decides to join cert official and utilize the compliance management capabilities of the platform, either on our, or, or directly on our system or through one of our partner channels. Um, and when they do so, that's when they become an actual paying customer. And why would they do that? Because ultimately, if you are a traditional certificate holder and you're in receipt of a PDF, a whole nother process starts for you at that point, right? You got to take that PDF and do something with it. And by the mm -hmm. way, it's static information. If you log into Certificial because of the integration, because of the extension into the management systems, you're actually having access to the data that was used to create the PDF, not looking at data and taking it off the PDF. That completely takes that process inside out. So we're firm believers, the more COIs that get sent out, the more cert holders realize that they can actually have access to the data that was used to create the form rather than scraping it off. They'll join the platform. And when you know that actual um, uh, transition occurs and they join the, the, the system is, is when we monetize. So we get a lot of skin in the game. Uh, and it's very mm -hmm. important for us, you know, and we don't, and, and, and also that model is very important because we, we cannot introduce any additional friction into the process flow. If you're an agent and you got COIs and you know, oh, now the cert holder needs to go even, even create an account in cert official to download the PDF, that's a problem. Yeah. So, you know, again, we know our industry, we know this process flow, we're not going to introduce unnecessary friction, but the benefit and the value is there. And we're firm believers that once people are educated on that value and they realize what they have access to, why would you do it any other way? Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's sweet. Yeah. So. Go ahead. Um, no, I was going to say, you know, just to, to, to kind of get a little bit into the, the agent broker side of the house, right? The automation is where we bring the real value to them. So, you know, I think that's an important thing to kind of touch on is that when agents issue COIs through Certificial, it's, it's, it's everything that happens after the COI that also has tremendous value to them. Uh, because what we're actually doing, I don't know if you guys are familiar with our branding, but we talk about smart COIs. Mm-hmm. You know, what makes a COI smart, right? It's, uh, it's the fact that it's actually 
automatically versioned out and automatically updated without the need for any manual intervention. That's Which, by the, the way, is an idea that's like fifty. I'm glad you you built it, but it's shit, right. it's like 15 years late, right? You're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. how does this Hold not have existed for like ever? Yeah. Well, <laughs> like Brian going, said, cause... it's timing, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you're right though. It should have been done 15 years ago. I couldn't agree more. There's been so there's been more ideas that have failed because of timing in our industry than right. like ideas that have been successful. Just with yeah. how archaic our mindset is. But, and, and it's a lot of what we're talking about, too. It's also the model, how you implement it, who pays for it, how do you get it into use and practice? I mean, all of these things make or break, you know, these these solutions. They're not bad ideas. They're, they're just, you know, difficult to implement and difficult to get traction at times. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, that concept of, hey, something's changed in the management system, or whether it's even a cancellation, a limit change, a renewal, you name it. We have the ability to take this data in. We have the ability to then update information. And then you'll know that the most current COI is always on file, matching that data at any moment in time. We version out all the COIs. That's what makes a smart COI. That makes this process dynamic and valuable. It's not, it's not once and done. You know, if you're getting a delivery, fine. Maybe one day of insurance verification is enough. Most of the customers we work with have people on job sites year round, construction companies. They need to monitor insurance three and five years after the job's completed. You know what I mean? Like, you know, these are things that, you know, are very difficult to accomplish with static information. And it's that automation that we bring um, that really, you know, saves the agent broker a tremendous amount of time. Totally. So how do you go acquire new clients, Peter? What's your financial yeah, that's strategy? That's a good question. Um, the, so the other thing about our branding, if you notice, in, is we, we refer to ourselves as a network. Um, and the reason we do that is because of the bi-directional and what we kind of call like the pendulum swinging aspect of our system. So, you know, depending on what side of the house you want to start that, that, you know, you want to lift the pendulum and start swinging it, right? Uh, it works both ways though. And so let's just say we go to the insurance industry. Uh, if you're an agent or broker and you're issuing all your COIs on certificial, even if one of those certificate holders decide to join our platform, maybe you issued a thousand COIs. One of them goes, hey, this is cool. I'm going to try this out. What are they going to do? They're not going to just monitor one COI. They're actually going to make a request for all their suppliers. So next thing you know, 200, 300 requests because they work with 300 suppliers go out the other way. All right. 300 agents get introduced to Certificial and go, oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. I can respond to this request. And by the way, this is a free platform. You can issue all your COIs. So if we get a few agents joining that way, back and forth we go and you know and so we didn't actually start swinging from the insurance industry as much as i would have wanted to but mm -hmm. needing some level of funding and some because of the business model we actually did start by introducing on on the requester side and going out that way and we had thousands of agents you know create accounts in the first few months it's not the best introduction to the insurance industry so if you received a request mm -hmm. from us you know I, I urge you to allow us to reintroduce ourselves yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> start the email that, with what the hell is this yeah. exactly you know because otherwise you know when it comes from that way it just kind of feels like oh another one of these damn vendor management systems yeah. actually do something you know but and you know and and if it's just swinging that way then it is right but the the, the reality is is that's not what it's about you know mm -hmm. it's really built to for our industry and to help right and and that takes sometimes you know when the pendulum swings from the insurance industry you can really feel that um but nonetheless, it's a bi-directional platform. And, and we are now at a point where we are acquiring, to answer your question, on both sides of the house, by the, just by that going back and forth and those requests being sent and, and back, we're, and we're just converting really what are warm leads coming from either direction. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Smart. I mean, that's uh, it's a pretty sweet little system. It's complex. I'll tell you, you know, I, I knew what I was getting into was hard. Every day I'm reminded yeah. that it's actually more than I thought. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and you can tell that you've spent time refining how you communicate about what you do too. Mm. So if somebody doesn't know what the hell you do, I can imagine that it's pretty complex. Yeah. And, it, and you're right. It, that's been one of our, our largest marketing struggles. You know, how, how do I explain certificate without getting, having to do a 45 minute PowerPoint? Mm. You know? oh, yeah. At the end of it, they go, oh, wow, that's cool. I get it. You know, prior to that, <laughs> it, apparently it does not achieve on our website or somewhere. <laughs> got, got a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but it is. I mean, it's you're you're disrupting to use that term, which I actually prefer a lot of times not to use. You're optimizing, you're innovating on an old process that does need to occur, and you're not replacing the process by any means. You're just improving 
how it gets done. Absolutely. You know, and that's and yes, that can be complex to explain the inner workings, but at the end of the day, you know, once people understand that it's you're doing the same thing, you're just doing it in a uh, much more seamless manner, basically. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of one of those assumed things, but we should probably stay. I mean, all of this in the U.S. is built on Accord form, so we're yep. licensed by Accord. That's how this. That's how the smart COI gets generated. So you're right. At the end of the day, that asset is exactly what it is today, but it's the whole process and it's what's happening and how it stays up to date. That's the diff, you know the differentiating factor. Um, and if anything's being disrupted, it's the it's the communication mechanisms that are that are really making this process inefficient. Email fax, you know, because, you know, physical mail. I mean, I hate to say that these things are still being used, but you guys know as well as I do. Oh, yeah. It's heavily, sure. heavily in use, which is crazy. You know, never mind just a just a, a paper driven, I'm talking about a pure paper driven process. You know, I have agencies that we work with, they, you know, they say they do folding parties on the weekends at renewals to get COIs out the door still. And I'm like, what? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's not an old conversation. If you're one of those people, please reach out to Peter and talk to him about artificial or <laughs> us, and we'll buy you <laughs> at a pretty low EBITDA margin. I would assume. Uh, so you got to. I don't want to put words in your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong. But you, 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 kind of came to the model that you ended up with by understanding where the problem or originated, if you will. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, everything that we, the one thing I think I'm, we're, we're proud of is that we haven't changed our model. We haven't changed our approach or anything from the day we launched. Like we went into this with everything we just talked about kind of at the forefront, which we haven't had a re-architect. We haven't had to change our, our approach or anything. It's, it's, yeah, that's, that's, we kind of looked at this and said, there's only one way to get this done in our yeah. minds. So do you see other opportunities in the risk management space to start the conversation at the end user or requester? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's the thing is, you know, really quite honestly, on either side of certificial, you're going to find management systems, you know, uh, that's mm -hmm. why we, that's why we, you know, yeah. brand ourselves as a network, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, in many cases, you know, we, we envision ourselves, you know, being what Swift is to banking. You know? um, and so, yeah. yeah, I mean, we're, we're really trying to empower everybody on either side of the, uh, the process flow. So, yeah, there's endless opportunity there, you know. Well, and that's, you know, we talk about this quite a bit, but in the financial services sector, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, banking or... Um, investment management, et cetera, new regs get passed down based upon events that happen, right? Like you get 9-11 happens and you get a new reg. 08-09 happens, you get a new reg. Like what, there's not one event. It's not like you have a, you know, cladochismic fire and all the buildings burned down. So we got to change the way that we operate in the insurance world. It's just been the same forever. Mm -hmm. so you know like on the heels of that you um um i freaking lost my train of thought through what i was saying there yeah occasionally has a stroke peter i glitched out. glitched out we're in the simulation uh no, no i mean like so i guess there's there's a there's no change that comes from these these certain events and it, it it takes the only way that i can see change like dramatic change happening is by starting it from the end user like you're doing it you need you need companies you need the population going back to their agents and their carriers saying i want to operate in a different way yeah yeah and 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 it is happening and there's a lot of valuable information that we're we're, we're now being able to obtain um, because we have a greater level of transparency between the insurance industry and the risk management community. There is information that is able to be shared now that really should have always been, but, you know, isn't maybe. Yeah. Always the case. Uh, I'll just give some examples of that. I mean, you know, the way we've structured our stuff, like all the insurance requirements that are buried in MSA contracts right now, 
like we don't have any of that data inside the insurance industry, at least not in structured data format where we can do anything useful with. A big part of what we do here at Certificial is, is making that available to the agents. And, you know, and it's detailed, right? It's very granular. It's if you can, if you can ask for it in a COI, you can ask for it in insurance. It's, it's a requirement that we have in structured format. And, you know, what that's allowing mm. is, is to really look at um, a few different things. You know, the process flows because we're working with both sides. I mean, going back to my Accord days, so like we're creating another layer of standardization too. You know, helping people understand what's actually a line of business versus a coverage uh, in some cases. And, you know, and, 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 you know, just these COIs get filled out with ways because that's how the cert holder wants to see it, not actually what it is in insurance. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we're helping, you know, iron out a lot of that kind of stuff. But the data piece is the more exciting part uh, because we are at a point, you know, where we're working with some really cool data and analytics and helping insurance agencies look at their customers and say, are they actually have enough insurance based on the agreements that they've signed with their customers um, and or if they were to make a change of insurance, how would that affect their current compliance status? You know, I mean, so you're literally taking the, you know, the detailed information that lives in all these compliance vendor management systems right now and putting that at the forefront into the agency management system as a cross sell upsell or just better way of retaining and providing customer service. You know, that's just one way in which this process starts to create ways in which we can spend less time, you know, folding COIs and putting them in the mail and more time <laughs> creating, you know, value added services that really, you know, empower the independent agent channel to say, yes, that's why I work with an independent agent, you know, because I'm never going to get this level of insight and analytics into all of these things and know that I am actually protected as an insured, uh, never mind just a cert holder knowing that I, I have insurance for them, you know? Totally. So, I just want to make sure I understand this. I'm following you correctly here. Sure. And I, cause I'm stuck on what you said a couple of minutes ago. So you're taking the insurance requirements in the contracts from the requester, the cert holder. So they have a contract with a general contractor who's our client or whatever. You're having them put that into cert official and say, you're going to send this contract, but then we only have to look in cert official to understand what's the insurance requirements in that contract that, you know, we got to make sure our client or actually cert official does it, but, you know, make sure that they're in compliance with. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's exactly accurate. We work with all of our requesting companies okay. and we've got complex workflows. Like we have, uh, we have organizations that when they do, you know, again, depending on the, the, the view you look at this where everybody gets a different name. So, you know, you may work with a company that says, I got a supplier enrollment, right? But clearly we say supplier, we're referring to the insured or the policyholder. Mm -hmm. But in their supplier enrollment processes, they'll answer certain questions. And based on that, it builds out the insurance requirements and creates the request for insurance. So in many cases, you, we can even get very customized. Uh, whereas, well, you're on site. So that means we're now going to add in crime. And based on your location, you're going to need a limit of X versus you're not on site. So we don't need to ask for crime. Like we've got all this built out and that's how we're able to get to that structured, you know, level with the, with the insurance requirements um, because it's designed that way. Well, cause one of the things that, you know, we end up dealing with um, is you have to have somebody on your team that your client's going to send the contract and say, Hey, am I in compliance? You got to have somebody review that and not every contract's the same. And yeah, it just takes time to dig through that. Yes. Um, so we can, so yeah, we eliminate that for our, our partner network. And then we actually, you, you mentioned at the, at the forefront of our poll, we were kind of doing like some intros AI, right? So, you know, yeah. built AI. So again, cause we always support for on and off network transaction. So on network transactions, this is done out of the box. Off network transactions, we actually have a tool we built for AI to actually extract the insurance requirements out of those contracts you're referring to, um, uh -huh. so that you know, you know, we don't have to wait for every last transaction to go through certificial in order to know we are, are able to store all the insurance requirements for a given mm. client. I did not know that. Yeah, mm. it's a that's big pretty cool. That's huge from a from an because that also decreases E and O. Oh yeah, um, massively, and just the efficiency. Like I said, I mean, it takes. You know, well, you get a who's standard reviewing the contracts. Yeah, you get a standard insurance or a, or a standard contract in, yeah. and you know those are pretty easy if they're if they're truly just the basics. Right. Uh, you can get through those pretty quick. But you start to get some that have slightly different wording. 
you know, they've added in a couple things that you don't know if it really applies or not. It just takes, you got to have experience. You got to go through a lot of those to really understand them, which takes tenure on your team or a lot of training. And that's yeah. just difficult for independent agents to do. We battle it. I know. I mean, you, you know, you almost think like I got to find somebody with 20 years experience in the industry to be able to help me through these. Cause they just, they need that. Yeah. Um, we were looking at some contracts yesterday that we were running some extraction services on and, and, you know, and, and, staring at a sentence for 10 minutes you know like i don't know <laughs> yeah because that's the problem with some of these you know it's it, training the tools and, and working with it it's, it's not easy it is complex you know but there's all different mechanisms and, and and checkpoints in place and also ways to flag things so that you know if it does require human human intervention it's not a problem but if it's on 20 percent versus 80 percent, then it's still a tremendous savings you know and in the end you know you can tweak something and then get it so that you do have all those insurance requirements there, you know, yeah. and hopefully we get those cert holders to join the network and we don't have to get any more MSAs from yeah. them. They'll, they'll come through the, the, the way that, you know, the current, the current uh, requesting channel does today. So yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot there, but you, you touched on ENO, which I wouldn't mind building off of if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because one of the other things that we're doing here that, you know, again, I don't think people see the COI process, but they forget about all these other touch points. They forget about, oh, yeah, it takes you 45 minutes to read an MSA before you can even start the process of issuing a COI. Yeah. Right. So it's MSA, like, by the way, is master services agreement just yes. for anybody out there that doesn't have. keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's 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 a good point. We That's another thing that our industry is, is <laughs> yeah. riddled with is acronyms that acronyms, we think. Yeah. Um, and so. Uh, on the on, on the uh, think about schedules for a second, All right? So you know even managing schedules. I see what agents and brokers are doing, having to email spreadsheets out, and are you still working with this cert holder? Do you still have this equipment? You know what I mean? All this mm -hmm. other stuff, right? And then you know all this stuff is manual. Like we've actually have this built into our our system where insureds can actually help manage schedules, manage, you know, have access to all this information. We can then get that you know you know they can mark it for deletion. We can get it back into the management systems. The management systems will then communicate to cert official and say, hey, by the way, that piece of equipment right there is on 25 of the 100 certs that were issued. Let's get it out of there. Hmm. And automatically go back to the smart COI. We just versioned out 25 yeah. COIs to remove a piece of equipment that was once evidence on there to make sure because it's now marked for deletion, we get it out of there. So even schedule management, I mean, there's a whole life cycle to this stuff that creates manual work that's very disjointed and disconnected today because it's being done on spreadsheets it's being done in inefficient ways but it's also introducing and growing that eno exposure because we don't have a great way of constantly updating it you know and that's, mm -hmm. that's one more example of the automation aspect that we've built out oh 100 percent. it hits so many different areas that i think agencies typically struggle with that kind of to your point there don't necessarily think about either yeah. where it's the extra time you have to spend doing this because it's Susie that usually does that. And we don't really know what Susie does all day. She just gets a lot of stuff done. So, you know, we'll keep letting Susie do what she's doing. Um, and, you know, you don't realize that Susie's spending half of her day trying to figure out these contracts to send certificates out or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, all the ancillary impacts. That's that's pretty cool. You, that's way more than I, I realized you guys were doing. To yeah, and we just have an endless, you know, uh, uh, backlog <laughs> because, you know, because the cool thing is we get to work with agencies like, like, you know, with, you know, whether it's having conversations with guys like you or just working with different brokers and, and, you know, and although there's the 80, you know, 80% consistency, there's definitely 20, you know, that's always unique. And you'll learn something by speaking to all these agents and brokers and, you know, and it's, and so there's just endless new ideas of, well, you know, if we could do this, it would really help with scheduled endorsements. And if we could do this, right. It's like, there's yeah. so many like little tentacles and, and legs to this process outside of the COI that, you know, that we need to think about the totality of in order to really truly say we're, we're actually really efficient in this end to end process flow. Otherwise we leave these things out and we keep, you know, exposure, you know, open in that particular case, or we just keep a manual step of the process that still makes it feel, you know, yeah, you know, there's a lot of effort and work that needs to go into it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so if anybody out there wants to learn more about Certificial, how who can they get a hold of? How do they get a hold of you, or what's the process they can do there? Yeah, so you know, I mean, I would say always just hit the website uh, www.certificial.com. Uh, you know, there's an about us, a contact us. You know, 
Um, they're always welcome to, to reach out to me, but you know, there's, there's email addresses up there that, you know, for sales or for info and signing up for, for, you know, newsletters or whatever the case may be. So definitely urge you, um, to take a look, you know, especially to the agent broker community. If you're looking for self-servicing for your clients, if you're just looking to improve your own operational, um, you know, efficiency inside the organization, make, make the agency more leaner, but more importantly, digital and modern, um, these tools are available. They're available for free. It's like there's, yeah. there's no reason not to leverage them, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're, we're raising some eyebrows and some folks will uh, join the network and, 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 you know, help really, honestly, the way I look at it is anyone who joins the network, you're helping innovate in, in the insurance industry. You're helping transform us from this paper driven, you know, uh, industry that we're seen <laughs> by many on the outside. Um, and so, you know, solving that problem and then being able to innovate at the same time is it's kind of a win-win. Yeah, for sure. It's awesome, dude. And so, um, everybody check out Certificial. We're running a pilot. I know right about now, uh, with Peter and his team. Um, it's been pretty awesome. So we're excited about where we can take that. Um, and yeah, reach out, learn more. I think it's, it's pretty awesome what you guys are doing. So thanks for coming on today, Peter. Yeah, listen, can't, can't thank you enough for having me. Appreciate that. And hopefully we'll do a follow-up one uh, in the future. I'd love to, man. Love to. Absolutely. Excellent. Nice Say to meet you, Peter. Appreciate your time. Likewise. See you guys.